What's up, Jeff Gatz here with another lesson for you. Welcome to my groove series where I will introduce you to my favorite grooves of all time and then show you how to play them. These grooves may be iconic, they may be grooves that are especially difficult, or they may simply be grooves that I find to be, well, particularly groovy. No matter what, they're grooves that I love and that I've spent a lot of time listening to. Hopefully you will enjoy them too. The groove that I want to discuss today comes to us from drumming legend Virgil Donati in the song The Thinking Stone by Planet X. I've been a fan of Virgil ever since his performance at the Modern Drummer Festival in 1997. Upon first listen, this song may seem a little bit less acrobatic than his typical clinic playing, but the opening groove is still a ridiculous demonstration of limb independence. And it's a testament, I think, to his ability that he still makes it sound so easy and groovy. Here's what it sounds like. Virgil begins with a 16th note inverted paradiddle ostinato that he breaks up between his left hand and his left foot. On top of that, he adds a dotted 8th note beat that he plays between his right hand and his right foot. Now why do I think this is so cool? Well, not only is the resulting groove awesome, but he's also playing totally different things with the right and the left side of his body. First time I heard this, I was blown away. I had never been really exposed to the concept of independence before. So it really inspired me to begin working on that concept. All right, so let's break this groove down a little bit. First, let's look at the paradiddle groove. Here, we'll play inverted paradiddles as 16th notes, orchestrated between the left foot on the hi-hat pedal and our left hand on an auxiliary snare drum. Now, if you're not familiar with an inverted paradiddle, here's what one looks like. Basically, instead of playing right, left, right, right, or left, right, left, left, like a traditional paradiddle, the sticking is gonna be modified to left, right, right, left, and right, left, left, right. So here's what that looks like played on the snare drum with my hands. Like I said, Virgil plays this groove using an auxiliary snare drum on his left side, but if you don't have one of those, you can give it a shot using a floor tom, a cowbell, the bell of your crash cymbal, or any other sound source that you might want. Uh, here's what it does sound like though, played between my snare drum on my left side and my left foot. Next, let's take a look at the dotted eighth note pattern. We'll play this between our right hand on a secondary hi-hat and our right foot on the bass drum. Now, I realize, like an auxiliary snare drum, not a lot of people have a secondary hi-hat, so feel free again to use a ride cymbal or any other sound source that you want. Awesome. Now the last piece of this jigsaw puzzle is to combine the beat we played with our left side with the beat we just played with our right side. You might find it difficult to play it all together at once, but don't worry, we can break it down into more basic movements so you can build to the final product. Here's how we can do this. First, practice the left side by itself as much as possible. 
This will help you ingrain the movements into your muscle memory so that you don't have to consciously think about it as hard when you add other parts on top of it. Next, once you're comfortable with your left side, begin practicing a basic quarter note pulse with your right hand on the right hi-hat. After that, try getting a sense of the polyrhythmic feel of playing dotted eighth notes with your right hand on the hi-hat against that 16th note pattern you're already going to be playing with your left foot and your left hand. Next, try moving the dotted eighth notes between the right hi-hat and the right, excuse me, and the snare drum, as Virgil does on the final groove. And last but not least, try to add your right foot on the bass drum. Okay, so here's an example of how to build all of these movements into the final groove that Virgil plays on the album. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please stay tuned for more grooves in the future. This was a pretty tough one, but I will be definitely be back with others of different skill levels. As always, if you have any questions about anything, please feel free to comment in the comments section on YouTube. And thank you very much for watching.